That incredible Hawaii airliner accident, new rules for U.S. forces in the Persian Gulf, and a mass march by Christians in Washington. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. It doesn't seem to make any difference how many times we've seen it today. It is still amazing. An airliner with its fuselage ripped away in midair, and all but one aboard survived. It happened over Hawaii. Tonight, NBC's Don Oliver tells us what it was like aboard the plane. Robert Hager follows with a report on the likely causes. It was, the survivors said, 13 minutes of sheer terror. Nearly a third of the Boeing 737 ripped off in mid-flight. Wind-borne debris raging through the open cabin. The plane, Aloha Flight 243, was en route from Hilo on the big island of Hawaii to Honolulu. But when the incident occurred, it diverted to Maui. Well, it sounded like an explosion, but probably more like rapid uh, decompression. I saw that the plane was disintegrating. Uh, I saw that uh, there was absolutely no hope that, that we were going to land. The pilot did something that uh, was unbelievable in bringing that airplane down. I and mean, a plane like that should not fly. An amateur photographer was at the Maui airport when the plane landed and took these pictures as emergency workers tended to the most seriously injured who were still strapped in their seats in what had been the first class and forward economy sections of the plane. Those less seriously hurt walked around dazed on the tarmac, comforting each other. 61 of the 95 people on the plane were taken to a Maui hospital, but only 13 required hospitalization. Nine are now set in stable condition, two serious and two critical. The passengers were fulsome in their praise of the plane's crew. This flight attendant was said to have crawled down the aisle after the accident, comforting those who were injured. Another had continued to help passengers, even though she had been cut by flying debris and was bleeding. A third flight attendant is missing and presumed dead. It is believed she was sucked out of the plane when it blew apart. A search of the ocean is being conducted. The plane's pilot, Captain Robert Schornsteimer, moved among the shaken passengers on the ground as they thanked him for what Aloha Airlines said was an heroic job of bringing the plane down from 24,000 feet and fighting to keep it under control until he landed 13 minutes later. Witnesses on the ground said the landing was unbelievable. Being ripped apart like that, you know, he, you know, they did an awesome job. Aloha Airlines said it had no indication of problems with the plane prior to the flight. Don Oliver, NBC News, Honolulu. The particular series of 737 involved in last night's accident has, it develops, been the subject of a number of warnings from Boeing and from the Federal Aviation Administration about fuselage cracks and broken rivets in the very area where the huge hole appears on the Aloha Airlines plane. A service bulletin from Boeing shows just where the problem is likely to occur and includes a drawing showing how cracks tend to develop at the rivets. Last fall, the FAA warned airlines failure to detect and repair cracks could lead to rapid decompression. That means a hole could be ripped in the plane and all the air rush out. A structural failure of this sort is just one early lead investigators are checking. But they say they're interested because they say there are no early signs that the gaping hole was caused by a bomb blast. No scorch marks, no signs of explosives. C.O. Chuck Miller, a retired government aviation investigator with years of experience. What you have here is an obvious structural failure of an airplane that uh, has reached uh, its cruising altitude, at least pretty high. And that's an extremely rare type of accident. But at high altitude is when the plane's interior is pressurized. The fuselage stretches very slightly, but enough to measure. Structural failure is uncommon, but was a factor in 1985 when this Japan Airlines Boeing 747 suffered a ruptured bulkhead in flight and crashed. Boeing spokesman Craig Martin today. We are sending a structures engineer and uh, accident investigation specialists. Uh, six NTSB people are going, and as far as we can tell now, four from uh, the FAA. Meantime, investigators marvel at the way the pilots brought the plane down. Dangling electric lines and flammable oxygen hoses were not severed, and the most vital control lines, which control wing and tail setting, were below the hull and so still operative. 
As to the cause of the accident, the investigation has just begun. There's still much work to be done. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. What will happen to the other 737s in the Aloha Airlines fleet is not clear tonight. Company officials declined to comment on that question. Also coming up in a moment, the Persian Gulf. And tonight on NBC Nightly News, a look at life and death as we rarely see it. It is the story of an Oakland, California neighborhood where drug lords are celebrated in death, where life is a constant struggle even for the most determined. We'll show you the fate of two brothers 